Locked in a closet, covered in a layer of dust, are hundreds of files, pictures, videos, and newspaper clippings documenting paranormal activity and unexplained events. These are the VAPI Archives. All right. When was it not? Was it, it was not like there just that when I opened up and I said I seen the cat and the horse was not on the step here. I'm really? Like, hey, look, he didn't did that mess on me. I'm going to kick him in the face. I'm getting, getting mad either. It wasn't him or it's mad. It's mad. It's mad. It's mad. Yeah. It's mad. It's mad. It's mad. I don't know what this would be right here. Yeah, I'll hand this to you. So we're doing a baseline EMF sweep and uh, just showing where the levels are around here in the living room. As you can see, they're very high all throughout the living room. Come here, guys. Dixie, please quit crowding them. They got to space to do that. Please. Stops here and then. Ceiling fan, perhaps? The light? Perhaps. Um, but it actually goes down as it gets up near the ceiling fan, so that's not giving off. Go a toward whole the TV no. behind you. Stop. Try that. Nope, go no. down near the TV as well. Go down toward the floor. That's consistent it's down consistent to the floor. consistent down to the floor. Um, well, they do have a basement here. We'll have to check and see if, um, if there's wiring. In the basement? Yeah, it's all through. Could, could be that there's wiring. Over here. It stops over here in the kitchen. Nothing more than the normal. Nothing more than the normal appliances. But it starts right here. Let's go on this way and see. Let's just do a scan of this whole floor here okay. so we can know that. The levels are or are not high. And it's fine back here in this bedroom. Yeah, it's really. So it's like the main area of the house there where we got the, the high levels. And let's see if it goes downstairs, if it's emitting from downstairs at all. No, this doesn't mean that there's ghosts. It just means that. that um, it can be various reasons, electricity, wiring. No, that thing is going off. Y'all know what's on down there. <laughs> I don't go down there. I don't like that down there. Okay, it's a cat. Yeah, there is a cat. <laughs> the cat just scared him too. I would say scared, but perhaps startled. Watch out for the horse. Uh, can we move the horse? Yeah, yeah, you can move it. Definitely. Okay. You can keep We're going to trip going. over that. So this stops as soon as we get down here. Well, yeah, but you do see the electrical wiring. There is wiring all through the flooring here. Yeah. Um, so we'll go over a little further and see. There's a couple of cats down here. There are. There's like three or four of them. Yeah. There's one that's solid black over there. One hiding in the dresser. This right here. This is all pretty quiet, this wiring. Right, but... Oh, there we go.
Notice it's not a full basement. There's a couple of places where it looks like the uh, cinder block wall has been busted through to provide access to parts of the basement that are filled in. Um, we have an oil furnace back here, but we do have a lot of electrical wiring. Um, there's some pretty good sized switches here. So it could very well be that the um, that the electricity is not grounded properly in one part of the house here, and that may be what's giving us uh, strong EMFs in that one particular main part of the house. That's weird that this just started going off. It did because you didn't get it anywhere close to the... It, well, I was I mean, holding it, was, it here the whole time I was shooting the video, right, and then all right. of a sudden it starts. It's not like you moved it closer to the camera. Um, was it going off here before? I don't think so. Okay, we, we hooked up a thermometer here um, just to monitor if there's any temperature fluctuations. And we've got a trail cam sitting over there on the shelf. Now, as far as the history of this house, they say that the landlord told them it used to be an old funeral home. So, that being said, um, the basement would have been perhaps where what they have done and bombings and such at the funeral home, or is that done? I mean, is the morgue typically at the funeral home, or am I asking a stupid question here? No, they would do uh, embalming and stuff right at the funeral home in the old days. So it would depend on the era. I would think so, yes. Yeah, so quite possibly. And she mentioned something weird about the drains down here, but it might be somewhere that we should take a black light to. Just to see, what do you think? Sure. Where are these drains? I haven't seen them. I haven't either. I wonder if she means the drain pipes. I sure don't see anything. But a couple kitties. So this is one of the things that dates the house. Uh, this is the old knob and tube wiring uh, that you could find um, right after the turn of the century when they started getting electricity in the houses. This is some some really old stuff here, um, and it of course looks like they've got a junction box here. So it looks like um, that they have come back in and put updated electrical wiring in the house. Um, it still left some of the remnants of the old knob and tube wiring. However, um, that doesn't mean that the electricity was done well. So uh, it very well could be that the wiring here is not grounded properly, which would lend to the high EMF fields. But, um, you know, the fact that it does not have like a regular heat pump or central air um, would, would decrease the amount of um, the amount of EMFs coming out of there, but we do have like this. Um, there's some some old switches and panel boxes, and there's all kinds of things that run the furnace here. Uh, so this could be one source of EMFs down here, very likely. Listen, listen. Okay, so. Stop, y'all. You listen. I, I, I can hear it. I'm. Listen, I can hear. I can hear the Glenn Miller Orchestra. Linda, come here. Hurry up. Okay, listen to this. They say no one's listening to this music in the house. Listen. It's 
coming from this back room. All right, so the world on a string, that's what it's playing now. If you go toward this back corner of the house here, what's back there? My mom's kitchen. Is she playing? Is this? Because that seems to be where it's coming from. Or maybe even out, out the back, in the back of the house there behind. Like outside in the house. Hear it too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I hear it loud and clear. Tell her it's like, it's like 40s. Yeah, it's like 40s music. Yeah, 1940s music. Yeah, it would be something like that though. That yeah. Is that sleep? Yeah, sleep. Oh. And they don't they don't fall asleep like with the TV on or anything like no, that. No, they're real thrilled. So we got to figure out where this music's coming from. Well, Do we have the stethoscope? I don't know. We very well might, because sometimes we've kept it in. Oh, that hold on, listen for a second here. Okay, now I'm thinking, because at first it was the Glenn Miller Orchestra, but now I'm thinking that's Michael Buble. The first one was the Glenn Miller Orchestra. It was Moonlight Serenade. She said that her, um, her parents have the room that's right above us right now, but she's, you know, 100% sure that they're asleep right now. Now, I did ask if maybe they had fallen asleep with the TV on or with the radio on. She said no. But it is definitely coming either from their apartment up there or perhaps from outside. Uh, but, I mean, it's loud. It is. It is loud. Now, when I first, I was down here, and I heard the music at first, but I just, you know, I figured someone else, because there's other people in the house was playing it. And uh, then it, it hit me, I, I heard Moonlight Serenade, which is a Glenn Miller Orchestra song. And uh, I went up and I asked her, you know, does, does anybody listen to the Glenn Miller Orchestra? And she, she wasn't sure who they were. Um, so we came back down here, The World on a String was playing, which is another old song from the 40s. Uh, but the more I'm listening to it, like, it's, it's constant. Like, I'm convinced that this music is coming from somewhere. Um, my first... At first I was thinking, you know, maybe it's some kind of a residual type sound that could be coming through, which would be awesome. But I'm convinced this, this is coming from somewhere because I'm pretty sure um, it's like a big band or a easy listening type station uh, mm -hmm. that might be available through satellite radio because, no, I'm not 100%, but I think the last artist that was playing was actually Michael Buble. So if it was a haunting, you know, any kind, any kind of a residual thing coming through from the old days... It wouldn't be Michael Buble. It just but stopped. It did just stop. Is there, a, can you hear a commercial or something? No. It's just completely stopped. So they either turned something off or... Hmm. I don't know. That's interesting. It is. I'm not convinced it was paranormal though. No, but certainly something to note. Yeah, now if we were able to get into this, if we went into this room, but she said her parents are sleeping in there and they don't listen to the TV or the radio or anything like that. But if we're able to get in that room and not hear it in that room... That would be interesting. That would be pretty interesting. 
So this is interesting. You know, I was walking over here just taking a closer look at the rafters. And why do you suppose there would be a pulley system down here? And you can see it's very old. Yeah, yeah that, that thing is definitely old. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's various reasons you could use a pulley. Um, but, I mean, knowing that this place was used as a funeral home, of course, you know, gives you that feeling that perhaps it could be used to lift and move bodies um, in different places. Um, but I, I really don't know. I mean, whatever it is, it's certainly, it's certainly old. Yeah. It is really old. And there's one there. It's just as old. Yep, and one behind you there too. Yeah, one right there. But the thing I'm wondering is, like this pulley is is like upside down. Is there any other ones? Let's see, I don't see any other ones. I'm trying to figure. So we're standing in the living room. We're going to start out here. Uh, since we've got all our equipment up here, we figured why not. Um, while the resident was sitting at here in the living room at one point uh, watching TV in the evening, uh, some bracelet was thrown across the room at her. So um, we thought this would be a good place to try. Now we do have our spirit box here. We're going to hook it up to the headphones and I think Jeff is going to try putting on the headphones and listening to the spirit box while I ask the questions and uh, see what results we get. Try telling us your name again. Tell us what your name is. You seem like you like to move things and make noises in the house. Can you do something like that now to let us know you're here? Who was walking down the hallway last night? Any other specific questions you could think of? So, like I said, mom. I heard it say Leo. Is Leo somebody? No, no one at all. Hurt. Did somebody get hurt? Who was trying to pull my pocketbook off of the counter last night when it almost hit the floor? Did somebody hurt that baby and that's why she keeps showing up? I'm tired of saying it. Is that what that said? Yeah. Yo. What are you tired of saying? We didn't we didn't hear it the first time. Could you say it again? Tired of saying thank you. Thank you for what?
So one thing interesting um, was that it said, we, we talked about the, the baby, and it right. did say mother at one point. I wonder if that was related. And it also said hurt before that. Right. So I'm not sure if that was related to, you know, mother hurt. Mother hurt, Baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell. Get Us Out of Here was also another interesting one. Yeah, yeah, that's something I've never heard before come through the spirit box. Um, almost like they're trapped. Right. Something's trapped. But also it said um, something about a dream. I had a dream. And you had you had some stuff going with dreams as well, right? I had a really bad nightmare. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. Somebody killed my husband in the basement. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. This, this baby is like not even three years old. A chubby baby. It's like a bonnet on her head. Um, her face looked gray, like maybe somebody beat her or something. It's like, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe somebody beat her really bad. No, when, when you saw her, you said she was reaching for the bottle on the table. So, where was that at? Right here in the kitchen. Right, yeah, okay. So, you was in the bed and you saw her reaching for the. Yeah. Reaching for the bottle on so the table. I heard her move the chair. And then she was, and when I looked over, she was actually reaching for the bottle. And when she seen me, she was just going like that. I, I and then my daughter mm -hmm. seen her. Did she tell I didn't the tell her nothing about tell seeing you, the baby. The and then a couple days later, she yeah, seen her yeah, sitting she on the bed. When first came in, yeah, she the same bed? Like yeah. I mean, what happened with the, with the window knock? Let me get some video of you telling I mean, about that, if you don't mind. They said they heard it. Well, I was in the room when it knocked. It didn't bother me. It ran. They scared me. It didn't bother So you heard it as well, because I heard them talking about it earlier. But you heard the knock as well? I mean, I heard a little knock. I only heard, like, two knocks. Maybe mm -hmm. knock. Like, like, I don't know. Mr. Tabor. Yep. I don't want to do that, because I don't want to hurt the It was more like, like, maybe knock. You're not being sensitive mm -hmm. enough. And on the yeah, kitchen, the, to on the window in the kitchen? I mean, I was just, and yeah, back I could in, do that. That's back in, yeah. yeah. More like... Oh. I'm gonna use the door real quick. Alright. Look, boy, like, this, this is good. I need something flat. This is too long. I'm not just used to that window in I'm not scared. Alright. This part. Yeah, I'm not used to the window right here, right? Alright. This is more like, yeah, this is the window right here. So it was more like, yeah, it was like this. Oh, you heard that on this coming from this window back here? Well, when we came back here, she was telling me about it, and it was like a, a baby knot, but it wasn't not quite like this. It was more like a baby knot, like a tap. A tap right. Like that. Right. Do you um, think it could have been the wind, or was it... See, it wasn't windy that night, though. That's interesting. Yeah, see, it wasn't windy that night. Yeah. We just, we just called it. Right, right. So it couldn't have been the wind. Yeah, it wasn't the wind, because it wasn't the wind out there. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to go back by the staircase where you said you get uneasy feelings back there? Yeah. Right? So we're going to go back there. I'm just going to run this as we walk around back there. We're going to do an EMF sweep and see what the temperature readings are while we're back there. So let's go back to that area, uh, the staircase. Yeah, it's usually like storage, but still, you can feel like, not what I feel, like you're kind of eating on the bottom. Slout. <laughs> Meth levels are still high. Cold. No, it came through here. Oh. Which makes me think. It's it is quite a bit colder in this part of the house. It actually went up to 72. So. And that's been the highest it's been since we've been in the house. That's like 
So I find that kind of strange because um, it's significantly colder here in this part of the house than it is the other ones. The other rooms, I was like really starting to break a sweat in because it's very warm. Yeah, me too. Um, we walked into here and you could immediately feel the cool air that's right here. I guess that this is a foyer. I, it looks like there's doors over there. I don't know if they lead outside or what the case is, but... Um, and then I almost immediately got the word cold. Yeah, exactly. But the temperature was, was, kind of went yeah. up to 72 and held there. Yeah, that's very odd. Strange. I say we venture down into the basement. I want to stick my finger in here. Oh, okay. Especially since she said she heard that licking sound coming over. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. I want to stick my finger in a hole where there was licking going yeah. on no. on the other side of it. I'll pass. That's a spirit bone. Yeah, we got the trail cam still set up down here. Yep. Temperature's down at 61. Yep. So, I have to say one of the things that makes me nervous about this place is that uh, the kids a couple of months ago were um, making a Ouija board and playing with it in the house. Um, but according to them, there were things that were happening in, in the house prior to that as well. So, I don't know if this is a case where it may just be something lingering from when this was a funeral home or, um, or if there's kind of a combination of things. It could be two or three spirits, one of which could have come through this, the Ouija board, and you don't know what you're going to get when you're messing with one of those things. Um, they're highly dangerous. And they used it right here Wasn't in the basement. Wasn't here in the basement? Yes. Yeah, see, that's, so. that's a bad idea. Bad idea. Okay, so here we are in the basement. I'm Jeff. And that's Linda with the spirit box on. And uh, we have this device here through which we may be able to communicate with you. If there's a Shoved in the crack. That's an interesting one. That's very interesting. Um, not sure how to take that. Could you, if that is you, trying to uh, send us a message could you tell me where I could find this crack? Or if not, perhaps tell me what was shoved in the crack. Could you tell me your name? I'd like to know who I'm talking to. Said something about a drum again, which is odd because I thought I heard it say something like that upstairs as well. That's interesting. Could you tell us how many are here with us right now? Upstairs, somebody said something about wanting us to get them out of here. Lost. Who is lost? We're going to need a name. Are you okay with us being here?
How does it make you feel that we're here in this basement asking questions? Does that bother you at all? We heard some people were playing what they thought to be a game down here. What? It sounded like a small girl's voice. Young girl. But I couldn't tell what was said. What was the name of that game that they played down here? You're a monster? That was a weird one. Now I'm assuming you were talking to Linda because she's the one with the spirit box. But why would you think that she's a monster? She's not here to hurt you. And neither am I, of course. We're not even here to ask you to leave at this point. We just want to know who's here, why you're here, and if maybe we can do anything to help you. Is there something that you need? Can you tell me who your favorite musician is. I heard some music earlier when I was down here and I'm pretty sure it was the residents playing it, not a hundred percent. But I'd like to know what music you like. Do you have a favorite song? Could you tell me the name of your favorite song? I left the digital voice recorder upstairs in the living room. Now, I haven't heard that song before. Um, and the songs I was hearing earlier sounded more like songs from the 40s when they didn't have digital voice recorders. If you would like us to leave, we'll leave. On the other hand, if you'd like us to stay, we'd be glad to stay. Could you tell us what you prefer? Artifact. Artifact. Now, is there some kind of an artifact down here in this basement? Something that you're drawn to? Dirty. If there is an artifact that you want me to find, can you tell me where to go to look for it? Where might I find it? Each of the others. Each of the others. Is there anything that I could help you with. We're only going to be here for a little bit longer. Look at this. You see this circle? Maybe if I give it some side light. Yeah, I see that circle very well. Now, if you notice, the concrete is raised in this area. This mm -hmm. whole area is raised for some reason. Right. I 
I do see that. It's a little bit odd. I gotta say, because that look you gave, it looked like something was behind me. That's why I moved over this way initially. But you can't hear me because you got the headphones on. What is this circle here? Why is this why is this like this? Can you tell us? Messages? Come on, talk to him. That's what it said? It's got really quiet. Artifacts. It said artifact again. Where is this artifact? If you tell me, I can go Something look for it for you. Or... Let them help us? Yeah, let us help. If you want us to find this artifact, yeah, just tell us what it is or where we can find it. We need a little more info about it. Or even if you want us to stay away from it, just say stay away. Can you tell us that? Life. I think it said, come in and get slapped. Come in where and get slapped? You're going to have to tell us where. She felt it. Instinct, it said. Who felt what? Kids. Are you talking about the kids that were using the Ouija board? I don't board? know. It's a young female's voice. Mr. Kent. Who's Mr. Kent? Nothing. Yeah, there definitely was. And of course, as soon as I stopped the camera. Okay, so something. What did it sound like? It sounded like one of these little rocks right here. Okay, because I like felt it almost. Like, you know how you can feel something in the ground? Yeah. And look, this sheet's moving. Well, that's because there's an open window behind it. I think the open window was... Uh, Why did that happen as soon as I turned the camera off? That's messed up. Of course. They don't want to be documented. But it did, it sounds like, why don't you grab one of those and like throw it across the floor and see if maybe that's what it was. That's what it was. Was it? Yeah. Now where does this fall from? Nowhere. Uh, it's got to be up in like the... I mean, that's like kind of like plaster or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be up in the...
I don't know where that would have came from. Uh, yeah, look. Up in here. Come over here. What? See, it's up in there. Oh. So what I'm going to say is that um, it, though it was a coincidence, I turned off the camera, and as soon as I turned off the camera, that hit the ground. But it is up in the ceiling here. But so it, it could have just fallen from vibrations. But is it up in this part of the ceiling? Because it would not have just, it wouldn't have bounced that far. See what I'm saying? Well, it would have had to have been right up here. It's here. all up in here. And see, you can see it's falling down on here. So if it falls down out of here and it hits this, it could easily fall over here. I would think so. I don't know. That's... Very odd. It's a, it's a good ways, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't think we could definitely say it's... impossible or paranormal by any means. And it may not have been those very pieces that I heard falling. You know, I mean, these, these could have been here for a while. And it could have been you know, one that just fell from like over here somewhere, because it sounded like you looked over this way, so. Yeah, because it was right behind me. Yeah. But what gets me is that it must have been a fairly good sized chunk of it, because if I could feel it in the floor when it moved, when it hit the ground, you know, it had to have been a fairly good sized piece. Yeah, that's weird. That's definitely something to know. Yeah. Particularly interesting were some of the things it was saying while we were down there, um, one of which it actually said artifact for a second time. Um, and this was after I had asked, was there something else buried in another part of the basement? Um, you know, because that's always a possibility. And, uh, and it had said artifact not too long after that. Now, you know, what kind of artifact? It didn't actually explain, didn't go into it, so we're not real sure what the artifact is. Uh, but we're told that the gentleman that lives upstairs has some things uh, that may be considered artifacts as well. So you got some, you got some artifacts up there. I mean, I, I may got one. I may got one. I don't know too many artifacts. You said it's like Egyptian or something. No, she said it was just. I thought. Uh, no, no, man, I wish I was. What about those brolic necklaces you got, dude? No, that's, that's. I got them on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got this on me. I got the God of Death on my neck too. Oh my God! I, I, so what's so what's, what's the I artifact mean, that you got? I mean, I got the the. It's a rabbit. It's very heavy metal though. It's very very. Heavy. You can tell it's very. You mm -hmm. you have to see when you come out. It's it's silver. I don't know what's aluminum or what. I don't know what element it is. But it got red eyes. The bunny has red eyes, and the and the, the body has the element chalk. So I don't know who's talking about that. Cause it was back mm. in the old days. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, but it's in a suitcase. See, I I packed it in a suitcase because I was like, I ain't trying to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Why were you trying to look at it? Did you get a bad vibe or something? Yeah, I caught a bad vibe too. I was like, I don't know about this. I ain't hanging down on my wall. Where did, where did it come from? <laughs> my mom. Oh, okay. She got two of them. One oh. she gave one to me, and one she kept for herself. Mm. But she never. Mm. Yeah, but she never. Tell me why she just said, huh? Hold on to this. I'll hold it to mine. Mm. <laughs> and uh and the Superman, Mr. Kent, oh, I got the Batman versus Superman posted upstairs in that Yeah, we did hear we did hear Mr. Kent come through as well. Yeah, yeah so that right? I think it has to be with me then. So I know that it's probably why. It could be. I mean uh have you lived here as long as they have? Uh, it was between. I was here first before the. Where's she at? She was. Right but I was here. You were here first. I was here like I moved in like a a month ago before they came in. Okay, okay. But I was hearing stuff in the attic though <laughs> at oh. the time then. You, you, but so you were hearing before. stuff before they moved in. Yeah, I heard stuff before then, but I didn't okay. hear it anymore because I was like I grew mm -hmm. up on this thing. You know? Right. I used to see shadows all the time in my bed and stuff. And yeah. Like, it never bothered me because I had to face it. 
I yeah. faced it. And yeah. my mom had a lot of demonic, well, I have called demonic, a lot of spirits in the house, too. Yeah. And I was, I just separate, I just grew up on it. When you grew up on spirits, especially when you live in Native American culture, it don't take no effect. Oh, yeah. Because you know what yeah. to do. Absolutely. You know, you know what to do and all that stuff. But to cover yourself, protect your own self right. from getting yeah. attacked. So it's just like a culture thing for me. So yeah, yeah. But when it, it comes to it. yeah, it comes to like certain facts and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know certain facts. I just take it like okay, it's the gift. It's from my mom. I'm just gonna take it. But I'm putting them on the suitcase because I ain't I ain't putting it on my wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a very heavy heavy metal thing. Huh. She says it's an old school crow's right bad, so why the rabbit got red eyes though? Yeah. It's very red. It's like red like the Coca-Cola over there. Are they like gems? Like the eyes or are they like are they painted? I can't red? well since I put it up, I mean I can't really like it's, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's red like that, but I don't know for sure it's jam or it always is some type of fake jam. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I can't really say. But I, I, got wonder, it I was wondering if this was some sort of like protective thing that your mom gave you. See, my mom never, she didn't really know the details. She, she didn't said, tell you. She just said, huh, I got the other one, you passed the other one. I asked him, what was it do with this? And she said, you hang your coat on it. And I'm like, well, I would hang my coat on the elephant trunk. No, the, the lady is just the elephant trunk. You you have to see when y'all come upstairs. That's the only way I can do that. But since it mentioned it, I'm thinking, oh, it must be the artifact I got upstairs. Because that's the only thing close to artifact I know is closest to it. That is ancient. Because it's ancient. It's, it's, it's one of those antique stuff. But I, I don't know. To me, I look at it as like... He would say it's demotic because they got the rabbit with the red eyes. Yeah. So they said it was demotic. And me, I'm looking like, I don't know if it's demotic or not, but I'm just going to put it in a suitcase. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about it. But at the whole time, it might, be, it might cause this stuff in there, uprise yeah. the spirits that I don't even know. So. I'm keeping that creepy rabbit hanging out right on now. Yeah, I'm going to keep the brown. I got dogs and they dogs see stuff that I don't see. So yeah. all that I do is vision stuff. So. Mm. Like power range stuff. So I have power range stuff. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. So there's the. Oh, is, is that a the that Japanese means, version? Yeah, the Japanese poster. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's why I said, wait a minute. I know I got Superman. Right, right. Now you see. Yeah, there it is. Huh? Then I asked you a question right there with the Mr. Ken. Right, right. Now I'm gonna show you the rabbit. Yeah, excuse my room. I'm. I like living like a bachelor. Yeah, wait, did it say anything about a snake? Did it? What's that? Yes, no. Yeah. No. Uh-uh. All right, because I got that too. <laughs> All right. Go, you relax. My security, relax. All right. All right, so we're going to take a look at this rabbit with the the red eyes, right? See, I buried that down deep. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> you put a lock on there and... Nah. I put this shoe box on <laughs> there. <laughs> Jeez, look at that. And, uh, oh, let me see. Okay, here we go. So, here's this. Oh, there you go. Wow. Rabbit. It's got the red eyes. They got right? And look at the legs. They look almost like, uh. I don't know what it is. Like horns. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Don't, don't they? Kind of like. They're like Lucifer goat horns. Goat horns, too. or yeah, like loose, like devil horns. The maybe? Bachman horn, as I call it. That's why I very obvious. That's so they weird. Is what? there any kind of what's the back of it look like? Is there any kind of date on it or anything like that? 1977. 1977. Yeah, that's huh. all the fact. <laughs> <laughs> it could be <laughs> technically. Yeah, look um, at them. You feel it? the metal. Look at the metal on it. You tell it's being handmade. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely handmade. That's strange. Like, look at the. I can't get over the legs on that. Why? Why would they put like? I uh, see. I uh, think I, I, I. My mom never tell me. It just came from her side of the family. That is an odd, odd rabbit there. This came from this side of her family. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another one from the VAPI archives and this was a, a pretty cool case because it's not every day you get to investigate a house that was 
rumored to have been used as a, as a funeral home uh, back in the day. Now, the music, it was interesting when I first heard it because you picture going down in this dark, creepy basement and you just faintly hear the Glenn Miller Orchestra playing, uh, kind of echoing through the basement. And it's like, where is this coming from? But after hearing Michael Buble come on, uh, you know, I was pretty convinced that this wasn't anything paranormal. And plus that with the consistency of the music, how it kept playing the whole time we were down there, I'm pretty sure it was coming from upstairs. Now with the spirit box responses, this was a time before we incorporated using the splitter. And the reason we started using that splitter is so that we could record the responses, the investigators could hear the responses, not just the person who was listening through the headphones. So at this point in time, the only one that could hear the responses was Linda. Uh, other than that, we didn't really get anything else. Any EVPs that we got, we kind of had to throw out. There was a lot of ambient noise in the house. So we didn't even really go in to the EVP sessions just because of that ambient noise. And people ask all the time, they say, hey, why do you have the residents there when you do an investigation? Now, there's certain cases where what we try to do is keep it the way that it normally is when the activity happens. And I say certain cases, we really try to do this with all cases, but there's some places that are just rumored to be haunted. And if that's the case, we can go into the place. It doesn't matter who's there, who's not there. But when it's a family that's living there and they're experiencing the activity, we try to recreate the scene. Whoever's there, we want there in the house. Whatever they're normally doing when the activity is happening, that's what we want happening. And if there's too much background noise, we have to turn to the spirit box, which we did in this case. And it was awesome just pulling this out of the archives and going back in time, looking at this case and, and remembering being there and some of the possible responses that we got. Uh, some of it could be radio chatter, of course, because the spirit box does scan through stations as well. But I want to thank you for joining us for this edition of the Virginia Paranormal Archives. There will be an investigation video on our YouTube channel here every Thursday night. That's our goal, to put an investigation out there on Thursday nights. And make sure you check in with our other content as we have the pub table discussions coming throughout the week. And then we have the Paranormal Evidence Room now. But thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Jeff. And remember, there's much more to see in the dark.